It is election day in America, and that means it is time to get out and vote. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video today. It is time that we talk about the 2023 elections. Because everyone, it is officially election day in America. And we have several critical elections in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, the state of Ohio, state of Mississippi, Commonwealth of Virginia, etc. And we got to have one final look at what could we expect for today? Or at least, you know, what are some questions we got heading into the election? Because I did my final prediction yesterday in a stream. So I'm not doing any predictions for today. This is just... What are some of the things to watch out for today? Like, what's turnout going to look like, etc. But first, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for a dollar a month, you could join Real American. This is the best way to support the daily content that we all know and love. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today. And one more final thing. I know I'm doing a lot of this. We have an election night stream tonight at 5.55 p.m. Eastern. We are going live. We're going to try to react to every election. We're going to see if we get results tonight. All that good stuff. Top right corner is the stream. Hope everyone tunes in. All right, enough promotion stuff. Let's get into it because there's a lot to talk about. And again, I've given my final predictions already. Go watch the stream from last night. You can see the predictions there. This is focused on what do we have to watch out for? What are some critical things, questions, all that stuff that we want answered? And I would say Politico actually has a very good article about some of the big questions about tonight. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so the first big question, I think a lot of people are still talking about it, is, is abortion still a winner for Democrats? Now, obviously, Democrats, they're going to win the issue of abortion. Let's be clear about that. Republicans, while they've gotten better, they're still far behind Democrats on the issue. Like in Virginia, they've been hammering Democrats on late-term abortion, but it isn't as much as how much Democrats are spending, like, every single ad. It's either threat to our democracy or Republicans want to ban all abortion. So that's what the Democrats campaign in Virginia. In fact, there is an abortion referendum in Ohio, the Supreme Court overturning Roe last summer galvanized voters and fueled a series of wins for Democrats in the midterms and special elections over the last year and a half. Even though there's questions about that, fine. You could say that Roe versus Wade being overturned galvanized voters, fine. I wouldn't say it necessarily, you know, gave them victories in special elections, but that's here or there, whatever. Tuesday's elections will test whether that trend continues to hold. Ohio is the most direct example, where many expect a proposed constitutional amendment to codify abortion rights to pass. The only question is by how big of a margin. Democrats in just about every race elsewhere have ran campaigns focused on abortion, from bluish Virginia to battleground Pennsylvania and even red Kentucky. In the Virginia legislative races, it has been the dominant issue. Democrat televised ads mentioned abortion about two and a half times as frequently as the party's second most talked about issue, education. According to data from the advertising tracking firm Ad Impact, it has similarly been central to the Democratic candidate in the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court race. So yeah, Democrats are throwing everything at the kitchen sink on abortion. Now, <clears throat> I'm starting to wonder if this is starting to backfire. Because we've had plenty of polls since 2022 that shows abortion's like the seventh most important issue now. 
it was like third in 2022, maybe second, which I disagree with, but fine. But now it's like, it's like seventh or eighth. More people are worried about, hey, what's going on in the Middle East? What's going on in Ukraine? <laughs> We're teetering on World War III and I'm not, and you're worried about abortion? I'm just saying like, more people are worried about, can they pay for food next month? Is there going to be a, ne a major war tomorrow? Who freaking knows? So I am wondering, will the abortion stuff continue to be the main thing for Democrats? They're still running on it, but I'm starting to wonder. Now, mostly the Republicans in like Kentucky and, you know, even states like Ohio and stuff. They've kind of been silent, or not necessarily Ohio, but Pennsylvania. They haven't really been punching back on the abortion narrative for whatever reason. But there is one notable counterpunch from Republicans. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin has rallied candidates that they're around a 15-week ban with exceptions such as for situations of rape and incest. Well, stricter than the current state law. Youngkin's aides believe that their message, Republicans are reasonable, Democrats are the extremists, can at least neutralize the issue. And this is the big thing. If Youngkin is able to neutralize the issue of abortion and it causes the Republicans to win the state Senate, this is the pathway forward until we can push the envelope even further. Focus on a 15-week ban. Or late term, you know, 20 weeks plus to 15 weeks. Focus on that for now. With exceptions for such things such as rape and incest. Paint the Democrats as the extremists that they are. They want abortion up to birth for crying out loud. Focus on that. Don't focus on heartbeat bans, which I support. But I would much rather have a 15-week abortion ban than nothing. Now, the second question, which I think is possibly one of the biggest, is Joe Biden. Biden's approval continues to sink, but will voters punish Democrats for it? And this is something that we didn't really see a lot of in 2022. Biden's approval was like 40%, yet those that somewhat disapproved of Biden, they actually broke Democrats. That's a big problem for the GOP. That they can't even win voters that disapprove Biden. They have failed last year to tie Democrats to Joe Biden. However, this year, Tate Reeves in Mississippi and Daniel Cameron in Kentucky, they have been trying to tie uh, Brandon Presley and uh, Governor Bashir to Biden, who is very unpopular. I mean, for crying out loud, it's Kentucky and Mississippi. Biden's approval in both those states are like 20%. And that may be pushing it. So I'm just saying that, yeah, they have been hammering the fact that these candidates, in particular Bashir, is a Biden candidate. He endorsed Biden. So they are hammering the fact that Bashir supports Biden and Brandon Presley, probably the same deal. I think this is a smart strategy. You have no downside. Biden is freaking hated, for crying out loud. Especially in Kentucky and Mississippi. So, I'm hoping that this is finally just like the 15-week abortion ban. Or finally the things we got to hammer Democrats down ballot with. Focus on banning late-term abortion and tying Democrats to Biden. Now, another thing is black voters. They are absolutely critical to Democrats, especially in Virginia. For the state legislator elections, they are critical. With that being said, they may not be turning out. And that's a big problem for Democrats. If they cannot get them out in Virginia this year, they're in deep trouble for next year. Because usually Virginia Dems have been able to get the black voters out for them. But if they can't get them out this year 
in a critical state legislator election that will decide the fate of Virginia. That may be a warning sign of Dems that uh, what we saw in Louisiana is not a fluke. And what we've been seeing for the past couple of years of black, even black voters shifting right may not be 100% a one-off. So it just comes down to, will they even turn out? If they don't, well, Democrats might start to panic about next year. And the last two things are, are Republicans actually voting early? I'm going to say yes, because Yunkin has been hammering the focus on secure your vote. Focus on voting early, vote in, vote in person, vote by mail, whatever. He's trying to get as many votes in as possible before election day and bank on a huge election day turnout and not being down by 500,000 votes in early voting. Be down by 400,000. I think this was a good idea by Yunkin. Secure your vote. Say, look, vote a week before the election in person. Make sure your vote gets counted. Make sure you vote. I think that was a smart idea. And even Politico, that is showing that a larger share of Republicans were in fact voting early in the Old, old Dominion than in past elections. But we got to see if these voters are new Republicans or are they ones that would have just voted on election day? And that cannibalized that. That's a fascinating point that we don't know if these voters are actually new voters or we're just cannibalizing our election day vote. We got to see what happens, but I think Yunkin has set up a perfect recipe for success. Focus on late-term abortion. Get voters out to vote as soon as possible. Get as many voters as possible to vote early, vote by mail, all of that. So then you don't have to spend as much resources on election day to catch up. Because it's stupid to let Democrats have a 600,000 vote lead, like in Pennsylvania. That's a horrible idea. And finally, the suburbs. I don't think this is really that big of a deal. Because, well, it's kind of just, you know, very questionable. The only suburbs that are kind of important in this election is in Virginia. And Kentucky, yeah, they're important, but really... When you look at uh, Kentucky, it really comes down to Western Kentucky, the rural parts of that state or the Commonwealth. So, yeah, I think outside of Virginia, the suburbs, I don't think they're really the most impactful thing for today, but it could still be important. But either way, folks, these are kind of the five things we got to watch out for. Will abortion help Democrats still? Will Joe Biden be a drag for Dems? Will black voters turn out? Are Republicans actually voting early? And the last one I'm kind of iffy on, but are the suburbs still swinging? I don't think you're, gonna, you're not going to get a good gauge on the suburbs because it's only Virginia where that's really going to be important. Kentucky comes down to the rural Trump voter. How do they vote? How much they turn out? All of that. But either way, folks, if you live in any of these states, you have an election, even in New York, there's a couple elections, get out and vote. These are absolutely critical. We got to win the Kentucky governorship. We have to win the Virginia legislator. We have to hold on to Mississippi and try to pull off a victory in Pennsylvania. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.